In the previous movie, we modified an existing shader graph to control the blending between two different texture maps. In this movie, we'll build on our work to make this blend effect more dynamic. Open the level Servo Blend Shader from your current project. You can also use the files provided with this movie by merging them into a new Stingray project. Open Servo's material in the Shader Graph Editor. The Color Map Blend node currently blends the two Color Map nodes uniformly based on the Blend Weight node, ranging from 0 to 1. Another way to drive this blending is through an image or a pattern texture. Create a new Sample Texture node. Set its node name and display name properties to Blend Map. Also, set its UI order property to 7 to place it with the other texture map properties. Connect the new node to the TextCord0 node to receive the corresponding UV coordinates and to the Color Map Blend node replacing its current connection. In the Materials properties, load the hexes pattern from your project's textures folder into the Blend Map property. This pattern now blends both color maps based on its grayscale range. From there, we could animate this blend map using a Panner node. This node translates UV coordinates based on time. Here we can use the leftover blend weight node to control it. However, to get the desired transition effect, we'll instead use a sprite sheet texture to control the color blend. Delete the Panner node. Then, replace the hexes pattern with the hexes sequence sprite sheet. The resulting projection is distorted on Servo. This is because Stingray still evaluates it as an image and not as a sprite sheet. To fix this, create a flipbook node and then connect it between the TextCord0 and Blend Map nodes. Next, set the node's FPS port to 30 and sprite rows and sprite columns to 4 and 8 respectively. Just like the Panner node, connect the Blend Weight node to the flipbook node. Rename its node name and display name properties to Blend Ratio. In the Materials Properties, use the Blend Ratio slider to validate your shader graph. Finally, select all the color channel nodes and group them together as base color. We can push this transition effect a little further by connecting it to the emissive channel, resulting in a striking glow. You'll notice that the emissive channel is set up slightly differently compared to the other channels. First, the emissive map switch node outputs a color value from either a texture map or an RGB value. Then, that color value is multiplied by an intensity value. We want our blend effect to use the emissive color and intensity values while staying separate from the emissive map. Therefore, we first need to decouple this shader graph. Delete the Use Emissive Map and Emissive Map Switch nodes, and then connect the Emissive node to the Multiply node. Next, duplicate the Multiply node and connect it so it receives the current emissive output and multiplies it with the emissive texture map. Connect its output to the standard base node, replacing its current connection. Stingray highlights the new multiply node due to a data type incompatibility. This is because the emissive map node outputs a float4 RGBA value in purple 
while the multiply node outputs a float3 RGB value in orange. We need to convert the float4 value into a float3 or vice versa. Here, since our emissive map doesn't contain an alpha channel, we can simply discard it. Double click its connection. Enter RGB as the permutation, so only these channels are used by the connection. Now that we've isolated the emissive color and intensity values from the emissive texture map, we can use them to enhance our blend effect. First, group all the emissive channel nodes together as emissive. Then, move this group closer to the base color group. Next, replicate the same shader structure we used to blend the color texture maps. Duplicate the color map blend node and rename it emissive blend. Set the A port to 000, and then connect this multiply node to the B port. Use the existing blend map node as the weight port. Create an add node to combine both emissive graphs. Don't forget to change the blend map node connection's permutation from RGBA to RGB. Finally, connect the add node to the standard base node, replacing its current connection. In the materials properties, use the blend ratio slider to validate your shader graph. Servo now lights up like a Christmas tree. This is the result of the emissive blend node transitioning from 0, no emissive, to 1, full emissive, based on the animated hex sequence. However, we only want to illuminate the hex's outline, so we'll need to add a secondary blend node to our shader graph. Rename it Emissive Reverse Blend. Connect the emissive blend node to the new node's A port, and then set the B port to 000. Finally, connect the blend map node to the weight port and complete the remaining shader connections. To tidy our graph up, drag all the new nodes into the emissive group. Use the Blend Ratio slider to validate your changes. The Emissive Reverse Blend node covers up the Emissive Blend node's result, leaving only its glowing outline. In the next movie, we'll set up a flow logic system to trigger this blend effect on Servo at runtime.